Welcome and uh, thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Vijay. I'm also known as the Float Guru. And um, yeah, today is a really exciting day in my life. I'm getting to do this. And also um, I've got another project where I make music. So I've also sent my music to um, one of my favorite record labels. So both my identities are working well. So I'm like super happy today. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. I've only got about half an hour. So the plan is I'm going to talk about um, how to raise your consciousness using flotation tanks um, for about maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then in the last five minutes or 10 minutes, I'll take any questions if you have. Okay. So before I get started, I just want to start defining a few terms that I'm going to use so that it's clear, especially when it comes to this kind of idea. Um, everyone has their own way of thinking about it. So I thought it's, it's much better if I just clarify what I'm going to talk about. Now, the first thing is obviously the word consciousness. Um, the way I'm using this word, I'm not going to talk about what is consciousness because that's a completely different uh, series of lectures. But when I use the word consciousness, I'm talking about the awareness or what is it that you're aware of in your reality. So that's the context in which I'm using the word consciousness today. So when I say raising your consciousness, I'm talking about how to raise your awareness to bring into something new into your reality that makes it your life. So basically your life is just what you're aware of in a sense. And uh, I'm going to talk about how to raise your consciousness. Why am I using the word raising? Why am I not talking about lowering it? It's just a convention. And uh, the view is nicer from the top. So we talk about a nicer view from the top. So we raise our consciousness. That's the way I'm using this word. Uh, rather than, it's like saying falling in love. You know, no one says rising in love. So it's just a convention. So I'm going with that. Okay. Um, to start off, I just want to tell you a little bit about me. Um, I'm an I was an electrical engineer for about eight years. And after my first float, I quit my job. And uh, I started coaching. I started doing a lot of work on myself and the way it changed my life. Then I started helping other people do it. And uh, now I coach people on how to change or transform their life using flotation tanks. So that's what I'm doing. I'm in Melbourne right now. And I was doing this in New Zealand and London before that. Um, and I got this opportunity. So I was like, okay, let me present this idea. Okay. So the first thing we have to realize is that when we talk about consciousness or what we're aware of, um, what the reality that we experience is based on where your consciousness is vibrating. Okay. For example, if you and I are walking down the same street, um, if you're feeling amazing, then what you pick up from the street is completely different to what I would pick up from the same street if I wasn't feeling so good. Right. For example, you would be, oh, the sun's out. Look at all these nice people, da, 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 because you're feeling good. But if I'm feeling bad, then I would say I would bump into someone or nothing is good for me on that street. How come that the reality that we're entering is the same in terms of the space and time of it? But why is it that I feel good in the same reality, whereas, or you feel good, sorry, and because you're feeling better and I don't feel good and I'm picking up something different. Why is it doing that? The reason is because where your consciousness is vibrating. That is the key difference. It's not the person. It's not that you are this kind of a person and this person is not that. It's not about that. It's about where your consciousness is vibrating. If you somehow could swap the consciousness between these two people, then you would find that their realities also will represent those consciousness or that vibration. Yeah, another way to put this is imagine a, imagine a building with about 15 different floors and each floor uh, opens up to different rooms and each room is a set of thoughts, set of experiences, set of emotions, um, set of different kinds of uh, realities in a way. And where consciousness is vibrating or which floor consciousness is in, that is the floor you have access to. So if you're in fear, what do you experience in life? Then you experience fear everywhere. Scarcity, fear, 
uh, worry, anger, these are all vibrating on a different scale or different lower floor, so to say. Right. If you can raise your consciousness higher, then you would enter a place, maybe there's uh, sorry, there's contentment, say boredom. And then boredom of nothing is happening. If consciousness moves up slightly, it becomes, oh my God, I have everything that I want here, contentment. So boredom and contentment are just one level apart. And if you keep raising your consciousness a bit further up, you will start seeing joy. And finally, you would start feeling love everywhere. Right. So it, it doesn't mean that you're that kind of a person. It just means that your consciousness is vibrating in that zone. And because it's a vibration, it'll keep going up and down. Right. Now, if you're in fear, then you slowly move it up and you can come to boredom. So you're either in fear or you're boredom. But if you're in positive vibration, then you would go joy to contentment. So you're vibing between joy and contentment. I hope that's making sense because we tend to think that people are defined. This is that sort of a person. This person is happy. This person is a good person. This person is, no, it does not matter about that person. Everyone has all these different floors. But what determines is where is the consciousness vibrating for that moment in time? That is what determines what kind of a person is presented to you. I'm feeling amazing today, right? But a few years ago, I wasn't feeling amazing. I was sad and I was depressed, but I wasn't that person either. If I drop my consciousness today, I would end up in that situation and the reality would be in that zone. Okay? So... It does not define you. It's actually where consciousness is vibrating. Now, there's a huge thing going on nowadays about healing and going into like your past and fixing that. I am totally not a fan of this because healing is not in the same vibration as feeling good. And the universe is a fractal. So the moment you talk about healing yourself, assuming that there's something wrong with you that you need to fix in order to be someone else that you're not at this moment in time, then automatically you will find more things to heal. How many people do you know that keep healing for the rest of their life? It doesn't, it doesn't happen because you're going into the past thinking that the past influences your present and your future, but it all has to do with where your consciousness is vibrating. Right, all you have to do is, like Buckminster Fuller was saying, um, if you want to make the, pre if you want to make something obsolete, then you don't focus on making it obsolete. You supersede it by making something new. So that's why we just have to raise our consciousness and not go back and fix something and then try and come up here. I hope that's making sense. So that's the kind of stuff that I want to talk about today um, on how to use or what is the model that I am using to help my clients. Um, raise their consciousness and how I'm using the float tank as one of my primary tools uh, to get them there. Because what the tank offers is not just like relaxation or, you know, recovery or just clearing your mind. It's, it's offering way more. It's impacting your consciousness directly. That's very powerful because I'll share with you why in a second. Now, I uh, hope I'm not going too fast. Uh, it's really hard when there's not an audience in front of you and you have to do this online. Uh, but if you have any questions, please drop me a message and uh, I'll definitely get to it. Okay. So first I want to discuss how floating fits in in order for your consciousness to raise. See, everything in the universe is a vibration. Right, you can see this, um, you can observe it saying there is day, there is night. Right, there is birth, there is death. Uh, there is sound, there is silence. And obviously sound and silence together makes music. Right, waking up and there is sleeping. If you notice in the current world, there is a lot of sensory stimulation. It's just too much. Right, and what happens is in the ancient times, there used to be a tradition or there used to be a lot of focus on this yogic idea. There's a lot of different names to it. It's called Pratyahara, which means withdrawal of senses consciously. Because we are using our senses consciously to indulge in food, smell, vision, sight, and obviously hearing and all the five senses, touch, 
we never take the time to withdraw them. And that creates an imbalance. Yes, you're sleeping at night, but that is not the balance for conscious sensory input. That is the balance for waking up, waking life, sleeping. That balances itself. But when do we usually say, okay, I'm going to withdraw my senses? We don't do that anymore. It's very rare. And yes, meditation practices do that, but it's very hard for people to get there because obviously it's a practice. And uh, what the tank is offering is imagine a vibration, right? Always needs to be balanced. It's two coming together to make one. Conscious sensory input, the whole day we keep doing it. When you go into the tank and when you withdraw your senses, you unknowingly are creating a balance for your whole life. You are creating this opposite which didn't exist before for you. There was no part in your life where you withdrew your senses consciously. As soon as you find this balance, consciousness now can move up. It's like, it's like a screw. You know, when, you've, when you get a screw and you get it perfectly aligned, it can go up and down. Right, but if it's off balance, it gets stuck. So that's how we're using the tank. That's how I'm able to create all these results for my clients because we're so involved with our senses every single day. And for you to enter a state of pratyahara, withdrawal of senses through meditation, um, it's very hard, it's difficult. It's a practice, it's an ideal way of doing it because then you're not depending on a tool. But nowadays we have these tools and that's why the tank is so powerful to first balance this wave. And then now you have, a, you have a chance to move your consciousness up. You have a chance to raise it and get a better view of the same reality that you're experiencing. So sometimes you might feel, I mean, all of you have floated, obviously. You would go in the tank and when you come out, somehow your reality is different. Um, your problems might seem a bit different. Your mind is in a different place. Why? Because you're hitting that balance. And when it's a balance, there's a sense of clarity. Consciousness has risen to show you something else in the same reality than what you entered before. I hope that's making sense. So that's how it's doing it. It's creating this down wave of your day-to-day -day conscious sensory input. This was not existing before as a tool. Um, it was like I said, Pratyahara, but now we have this amazing tool and it's, it's just incredible once you look at it in that zone because it's not for your body, it's not for your mind, it's for your consciousness, completely different. And what you're conscious of changes instantaneously when you come out from the tank. And um, yeah, it's just beautiful. So that's how it's doing it. Taken me a while to figure this out, but once you realize it, you're like, ah, oh, it makes sense. Everything is falling into its place because you're creating a completely new cycle. It's a new wave, okay? Wow, it's 15 minutes already. Okay, I need to go through a few things. So, I've got this five-step model that I wanna share with you guys and uh, try it and you can see how it goes and definitely uh, drop me an email once it starts working for you. Now, the reason why most people are not seeing results using the tank or any of these techniques out there is because they're missing a huge piece in how things work. Okay. A lot of people ask me, Vijay, just give me a technique. What can I do to change my life and raise my consciousness? And as you're saying, you know, be aware of a new reality. Give me a technique. The techniques are only the fifth part of this model. Okay. It's like, I call it like coriander. When you make Indian food, um, you add coriander on top and it just mashes everything and makes it nice. I mean, obviously some people hate coriander, it's not for them, but the ones who like it, you know that it's a savior. Even if your curry or whatever is turned out average, you add some coriander on it and boom, it's amazing. So techniques are like coriander. It doesn't quite do it. I'll tell you why. Because there are four other things that come before techniques, right? And um, it's in this order. The first thing, the most important thing is who you think you are, okay? That is the most important thing, your ego or your identity. Who you think you are drives every single thing in your life. 
And that is almost 95% because it's, that lives in your subconscious mind. It's not your conscious mind, it's in your subconscious. Who you think you are, what people have told you till now, and your conditioning and all these things are based there. But it's not about what other people think about you. It's who you actually think you are. That is the most important part, right? It's in the subconscious and see, the tank gives us an access there because obviously you're entering theta states and that's where your subconscious is. So we get access there. The second thing is your beliefs. Not so fully subconscious, but slightly like in your conscious, what do you believe in? What do you think the world is about? What do you believe is good? What do you think is bad? These two things are vital for you to see the result on the other side. Okay, because the techniques are based on these two things. The technique that you want to apply to your life has to come from these two. Who you think you are first. And then second is your principles or your beliefs in life. What is good? What is bad? What are you here to do? Some people call it purpose, although there is no purpose to life. That's again a different topic. Some people think it's purpose. What is your purpose? Right, that drives everything. And then comes in the middle is line of thought. Your line of thought has to be crystal clear if you wanna transform your life and if you wanna do something in your life. This is where all the fuzziness comes. I mean, what is the difference between you and any other person? Say for example, if you're, if you're chasing money or if you're not chasing, but if you're into money, what is the difference between us and a millionaire other than a million dollars, unless you're a millionaire? It's the way they think. The com thinking is completely different. Right, so the line of thought needs to be clear. And after that, you have discipline. No, none of your techniques are gonna work if you don't have discipline in life to make these techniques work. Right, and then comes technique. You see how your techniques don't work. And I'm gonna tie all this up in how to use it in the tank, obviously, but this is the model that has been amazing for me and my clients because we find out subconsciously what's happening. Like, who do you think you are? Why do you think that way? Nothing to do with your past, nothing to do with healing at all. Just where is your consciousness vibrating in this moment in time? Like, because that determines who you think you are. And then comes your principles, your beliefs, and all of those things. And then your line of thought. Now, line of thought is what most people focus on every single day. It's your thinking because it's become, if it's just like any other sense, but we've given it too much importance in our life where thinking has taken over, you know, ceaseless, just nonstop thinking. So most people think that's really important. If these two, your subconscious and your beliefs work together and you fix a few things here, if you, that's the word you want to use, or if you like sort it out, these two, and then your discipline is good, right? And then your techniques add on top if you want to do something then you will find that automatically you will enter a great line of thought. It's a result of your subconscious and it's a result of your day-to-day -day discipline and it's a result of your um, techniques or methods or tools. Floating is here in terms of the technique. Floating actually covers all five, which I'll go through now, okay? Now, imagine if you're going for a float, the method, Obviously, you can do a lot of different things in the tank. Uh, you can find stillness, you can visualize, you can build your mind's eye, you can change the story in your head, you can do a lot of different things. So that is the technique. Discipline, when you float regularly, that's key. You have to float regularly in a pattern. Try and keep the same pattern so that you know if if both the variables are changing, you can't tell what's wrong and what's right. If one variable stays the same, which is the day and the time you float consistently, then you can tell what the other thing is doing, which is your consciousness. So you wanna keep one standard as much as you can. Float in a pattern, right? So that's discipline. Line of thought, basically using your mind to see what you wanna do in the tank, which you can also leave it alone, or you can do a few exercises and all that. Now, your beliefs. This is something you can work on in the tank. It's a story you tell yourself. It's a narrative, right? And then comes subconscious. Once you enter a really good state of consciousness in like theta, theta states, then you can tune your subconscious to the reality that you want to live in, okay? I mean, your, your reality is basically the minimum standard you've allowed it to be. So in that case, you can use the tank to tune your subconscious. 
all of this while you're withdrawing your senses again. I mean, when you add it all together, there is nothing else like it right now for the condition that people are experiencing. The biggest problem right now is that consciousness is vibrating in a really low zone. I'm not saying, um, it's, I'm not saying it's like a condition, but it's just a symptom of what's going on around the world. Right. So when you want to raise it, there's a tool that just sorts everything out for you. All the five layers are covered. Subconsciously, you're entering those states. You have, you can change your beliefs and you can really work with that. Your mind is going to be clear line of thought, because obviously you're entering flow states and then it's forming a discipline because there's a certain kind of discipline you need to have to float effectively. Right. And uh, I find that there are certain kinds of um, body types or certain kinds of mental states that find different ways of floating. You have to keep it tight um, for the max benefit and to really use the tank and to transform. So there's a discipline involved in that. And obviously you can have a lot of fun trying different techniques in the tank. Right. I don't know of anything else that gives you like the full, full bang in a way. Okay. So that's how you actually raise your consciousness by targeting all five going into the tank and understanding what is it that you need to do. Now it gets a bit more uh, intricate once you realize that each client is different and each client would need different sorts of techniques and a different approach to balance different things out in their life. Um, that's different, but this is the general idea of what I am using to get my client results. And um, the reason it's making an impact is because, like I said, it's directly working on your consciousness. There is no, there is no like filters in the middle, right? It's taking that energy or the awareness and then it's directly working on it. Okay. I think I've only got about seven minutes. Um, that was a really quick chat. Okay, so any questions for me? I'm um, sorry if it was too fast or if, if none of it made any sense. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you have any questions for me, please. Um, where can I find? Okay, I guess there is no questions. Well, just to like summarize, um, basically it's about understanding what consciousness is, or sorry, where your consciousness is at that moment in time and uh, using the tank to cover all five areas. And um, yeah, and from there you just have to tune all five and uh, raise your consciousness. And that's how you do it. Um, mindful warrior yoga. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I've got five more minutes. If you have any questions or uh, if you'd like to know more, then yeah, drop me a line. Or if you enjoyed it, then yeah, definitely let me know. <laughs> Oh, there's a question on passable. Wish you had more time. How do you introduce your guest on an average visit? Where can I get more info? That was awesome. Thank you. So more info, um, drop me an email and I will, I'll be able to send you more information. That's Missy Dobos. And uh, so be wing, how do you introduce this to your guests on an average visit? So what we're trying to do is basically show them that everything has to do with consistency and everything is about the discipline and the pattern in which you float. We have to stress the fact that when you float in a pattern, that's when you see the results and we have to focus on the result. That's how you do it. And then when you focus on the result, um, see, 
most people don't even care if you tell them you've absorbed 500 milligrams of magnesium and all that because we can never see that you know all we can see is that we can only experience if you're feeling good or bad and this approach of consciousness is just about them feeling different things in their life being aware of different areas so after the first float you can definitely ask them to be aware of what is it that they're bringing into their day-to-day -day reality and what is the difference and then from there you can introduce this idea to them saying hey this is what floating is doing to you it's changing the way you perceive the same reality around you thank you yes missy i've got your email it's a practice when when do you prefer to float morning night and um, when do you think it's more effective form of meditation okay so the morning night it actually depends on so many different things that are going on um, I prefer to float in the afternoon sometime because when I wake up, I have my own whole morning routine, which gives me uh, that flow state already. And in the afternoon, you will find around like two o'clock, three o'clock. Naturally, our body wants to kind of relax. Um, that's when we go and grab that second coffee or, you know, we feel a bit lazy at work. So that's the time when you want to float because your body is already winding down. Right. And then I find that because of that, my night sessions are really great because if I'm making music or if I'm trying to work on something creative, then it really sends me in a good zone, good zone. But it actually depends on what your body type is. And I'm talking about the Ayurvedic way of understanding. If you're someone who can, you know, who is present or if there's someone, if it's someone who's just, whose mind is just wandering a lot, or if it's someone who likes to get things done. So Pitta, Vata and Kapha, obviously. So it depends on that. And you want to float during Vata times of the day. If you want to be creative, you want to float during Pitta times of the day if you're feeling lazy and you want to float during Kapha times of the day if you want to relax. So that's key. Um, you can find these times of the day online. And um, yeah, it's, it's important to understand where your client is and um, it's important to understand what is it they were trying to achieve. That's key. The result is, the question is not when do you float? I mean, that's a good question, but we have to frame it in such a way that when do you want to float or when do you prefer to float to achieve what? That is the key because there's always a thing behind it. Like if you say, what's a good diet? Then my question is, what's a good diet for what? Like, do you want to build your body? Do you want to keep your mind clear? Or do you want to train for a marathon? Completely different diets. They're all good. So we have to ask our clients at a, when they come for a float, like generally, what is the intention? What is it that you're trying to do? All right? And that would be easy. Then we can say, okay, if this is what you're trying to do, then this is how we can work with you. And this is what we can get you to do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have any literature or curriculum you share? Best place to connect and follow your work. Okay. Best place to connect is my Facebook. It's the float guru. And um, yes, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to create more float coaches. Um, so I've got three at the moment who are working with me and I'm trying to get into float centers so that um, they can do their own coaching there and help the float centers as well. Because right now what we're missing is the human connection. Instead of an online thing, I'm trying to get more people to do what I'm doing so that it's like personal trainers at the gym, you know? So um, so that they come in and we know what they're trying to do and we use the approach of consciousness and we really get them results so that it works well for both the float centers and for like the clients who are coming in. Um, so I'm coming up with the curriculum for that, but if you can send me a message on um, my Facebook page or Instagram, I'll definitely get back to you. I'm interested in more info. Yes, definitely. Yes. It's great to have a routine. I love the conscious vibration. I've got a certified in conscious transformation energy practice. I love your approach. Thank you so much. Thank you. Greg, I've got your email. Terrific. Thank you. Very excited to learn from you. There was so much information. Actually, this is, a, <laughs> I had to like cut it down and make it concentrated within the, within 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, what do I do? Um, because there's so much to share in terms of, um, I mean, I'm an electrical engineer. And after my first float, I completely quit my job because I didn't know what I was doing. I wanted to do something with floating. And the way it's impacted my life and my music and just amount of, just the way my mind works now, the float, float tanks has a lot to do with it. 
And um, yeah, so there's so much information that I've accumulated over the last few years and I would love to share it with you guys. So I've got your emails here. Um, the best way to do it is I'll send you an email with my contacts and um, yeah, and then we can get in touch and see, see what we can do. I can, if you have any questions, I can come up with some sort of a document or a video and um, help, help people really understand that the tank is not just this tub you go into for your mind and you know, for your body, but it's completely transforming or has the power to transform your consciousness. And um, that's the mission I'm on. And <laughs> yeah, so that's why I got really excited when these guys invited me. Okay, I've got your emails and um, yeah, any more questions? Exciting. Well, thank you so much. I think that's my time up. Let me just check. I really appreciate every single one of you um, like joining this webinar from wherever you are. Uh, it's been great. And uh, yeah, I will keep in touch with you. I will send all of you an email just so we can keep in touch. And uh, yeah, please shoot me any questions you have. And if, if you need any documents or anything, or this idea that I'm trying to promote, then I will help you with that. And uh, hopefully the aim is so that we can really take a client. Uh, the aim should be so that you can take a homeless person from the street and be able to make them their greatest version using float tanks. That I think, I honestly think that's possible that should be the aim. Like, hey, you come here, I will make you your greatest version. And um, that's the aim. And thank you, everyone else. Thank you, guys. And um, <laughs> yes, Daniel gets it. Everyone gets it. Thank you so much, guys. And I'm going to press end here and recording. And you can always watch this recording again when you have time. And uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. And I'll keep in touch. Thank you so much. Bye.